Hi guys, uh, can you see me and hear me? Uh, let me know if I am live now. Mm. Alright, I think uh, you can see me and hear me now. So, we will be starting off with the third part of MKI. So, this is uh, uh, part 3. We have had one part which was the first part on uh, surgery on YouTube. The second part was on the app which is also a free class. Yeah, you can see me now. Alright, okay. Uh, so, yeah, the second part was uh, just I am not able to see the screen. Mm, yeah, alright, all set. So, the second part uh, is on the app. A few of you were asking for it. Uh, the free link, I, I will uh, post it in the comment section once the class is over. All right. So, before we begin, uh, um, I am Dr. Zainab Vora and I have done my MBBS and MD in radiology from Ames, New Delhi. Uh, but today, we shall be discussing uh, the images in ortho and this will act like a rapid revision of the entire subject only. We will try to do this in one hour. After this class is over, we have one more class on the app, which is a free class, wherein we shall be discussing... Uh, any doubts that you have all right so any doubts that you have you can uh, ask me it's gonna be a free ams session usually in our strategy sessions we, i don't get time to ask the to answer the doubts uh, so i've just taken a special class uh, for that so immediately once this is over we'll be meeting on the app and uh, you also have uh, wherein you can talk also if you want to all right okay i guess we can start uh, if everything is good tech wise so before i start with the images per se just one thing about the batch course so we've started off with the rankers batch yesterday uh, a lot of you were there we've started off with test and discussion we finished an ad surgery in orthopedics yesterday tomorrow is going to be the next class in the series wherein we have four subjects uh, so tomorrow mainly short subjects we have micro we have fmt ent and derma right so that is what is planned so you should be done with revision of seven subjects not by tomorrow but at least you know uh, around the next week or so we want to finish not 13th it's tomorrow only all right we couldn't reschedule it it's gonna be tomorrow itself and then the next class will be after a bit of a break on 16th all right so you can just catch up uh, on that okay yeah this is going to be one hour class because then we have one more class on doubt solving which is lined up okay so this is going to be one hour and we want it to be crisp and we want to be precise so that you can revise this uh, you know quickly all right then let's begin without any more ado so starting off with bone tumors all right so anytime you look at a bone tumor case you the most important is going to be the location where is it based in terms of the long bone is it in the epiphysis metaphysis or diaphysis that is the first thing you look at the second thing you look at is the age of the patient and then look at the morphology all right so that is the stepwise approach you want to take so whenever you see that the tumor is reaching the end of the bone right can you see how it's reaching end of the bone in both of these cases means it is an epiphyseal tumors all right so so epiphyseal tumors remember e c g all right ecg is the mnemonic epiphyseal tumors are two so we have chondroblastoma and we have giant cell tumor all right so we have chondroblastoma giant cell tumor remember chondroblastoma is also called as the cord man's tumor all right so one that you see on the right side even if the patient uh, even if the examiner doesn't give you the age just looking at the x-ray itself you can see how it's a skeletally immature patient the growth plate is not yet fused so this is a chondroblastoma on the other hand when you see that the growth plate is fused particularly when you see distal end of radius this has to be a giant cell tumor remember also called as osteoclastoma because osteoclasts are the physiological giant cells in the bone all right so this is something which is very very important okay one question from kushagra patient presents to you with dilated tortuous veins of the leg which is the best investigation to perform to confirm the diagnosis so again in this case we want to do see the options don't make sense because one option you are saying is color doppler one is duplex ultrasound because both of them mean the same thing and that is what we would be doing in this case to confirm whether it's an av malformation or what is the cause of the dilated veins usually it's an av malformation so it's duplex ultrasound both of them mean the same thing okay 
All right. So we have chondroblastoma coming back here. So we have chondroblastoma and we have giant cell tumor. Remember, GCT is something which figures in most of the exams. So you would have a middle-aged person, somebody who's at attained skeletal maturity with a soap bubble appearance. Another question that comes uh, from here is it's not the giant cells which contribute to the malignant aspect. It's basically the monocytes all right it's basically the stromal cells which are going to be responsible for the malignancy here all right so that is something that you want to uh, remember as far as this question goes it's the mononuclear cell so m for malignancy here Although it is not a typically malignant tumor, we describe it as a benign tumor with locally aggressive potential. So it does not metastasize, but it does cause cortical irregularity and can have a soft tissue component. So remember, it is typically described as a benign lesion with, uh, with local uh, aggression, with local aggressive ability. All right. So these are the two epiphyseal tumors. This is how we approach it. Remember chondroblastoma one more point C for Cordman's tumor and C for chicken wire calcification. That is what we are going to be seeing on the histopath chicken wire calcification. All right. So two epiphyseal tumors done. Anytime we have diaphyseal tumors, remember three things to, should come to your mind. Three tumors starting with vowels. We know vowels stick together. That is one mnemonic that we learn. All right. So what you are seeing here there are three diaphyseal tumors diaphyses means center of the bones we can see that there are three tumors here when you see that it's a child usually seen in 0 to 20 years first and second years of uh, second decades of the life a very large soft tissue component you are seeing that the periosteal reaction is interrupted right this is always a bad periosteal reaction a periosteal reaction of an aggressive tumor this is an evening sarcoma cannot get this wrong all right typical periosteal reaction onion peel but any interrupted periosteal reaction remember could be onion peel which is multilamellated could just be interrupted like this can be seen remember that here the the presentation the clinical presentation would mimic an inflammatory lesion because the patient would present with fever um, redness all right and increasing soft tissue swelling which would mimic that maybe he has uh, some sort of an inflammatory mass but when you do the x-ray you realize that there is all the features of an evening's sarcoma all right what is the translocation that we are going to see and what is the marker remember the marker is going to be mic2 cd99 and the translocation is going to be t11 11, 22 which you're gonna see this is the most radio sensitive bone tumor something that has been asked in NEET and FMG both the exams most radio sensitive so radio sensitive it literally melts on giving radiotherapy also very very chemo sensitive okay so this is a small round blue cell tumor all small round blue cell tumors are very very radio sensitive second one when you see this is typically always in the tibia and it is based anterolaterally. So you can see how it is eccentric with an anterior predisposition. So this is an anterolateral tibial mass which you are seeing. So what is the diagnosis here? This is adamantinoma. Again, adamantinoma, remember, is a tumor with malignant potential it is a tumor which also has malignant potential apart from that you only need to diagnose it not much apart from that would be asked here so remember tibial lesion eccentric lesion this is adamantinoma on the other hand they'll give you a buzzword they'll give you a young man with nocturnal pain which is relieved on taking and they say it's relieved on taking aspirin what is it it is an osteoid osteoma it is the most common true benign tumor of the bone it is an osteoid osteoma which has a very small nidus the counterpart of this which has a larger nidus larger than 1.5 centimeter we call as osteoblastoma so remember osteoid osteoma osteoblastoma both are the same entity just the size of the nidus here is going to be less than 1.5 centimeter and it is this nidus which is basically going to be responsible for the pain so if you look here you can just see that there's some sort of periosteal thickening and there is a small lucency the investigation of choice here is ct remember this fact because for all other bone tumors it is mri this is the only tumor where investigation of choice is going to be ct scan why because we are looking for c for cortical thickening cortex ct all right calcification ct remember these two c's but cartilage 
MRI. All right. So cortex in calcification, always investigation of choice is going to be CT. You can see how there is a lucency, the black part. That is what is our nidus and that nidus releases prostaglandin. Which prostaglandin? Prostaglandin E2. All right. So E2, we'll remember E, right? E, that's why there is pain. And because NSAIDs are going to block the synthesis of this prostaglandins, we are going to have relief on giving aspirin. Treatment of choice here is going to be CT guided RFA. You just got to ablate the nidus and the patient will be relieved of pain. RFA stands for radio frequency ablation. So these are three diaphyseal tumors. What have we learned so far? We have, we are practically discussing bone tumors. Epiphyseal, chondroblastoma, giant cell tumor. Three diaphyseal tumors starting off with vowels. What are the three ones? Ewing sarcoma, adamantinoma, osteodosteoma. Three vowels for you. Going on to metaphyseal tumors. The most common aggressive bone tumor you cannot get this wrong whenever you see increased density a very very aggressive permeative destruction meaning i cannot uh, delineate where is the tumor where is the normal bone it's permeating into it suggesting aggressive nature this is osteosarcoma Aggressive periosteal reaction in the form of Codman's triangle. Codman's tumor was chondroblastoma. So we have a Codman's triangle. We have this perpendicular periosteal reaction which is called as sunburst periosteal reaction. So this is your classical osteosarcoma. This is the most radio resistant bone tumor right radio sensitive was evings this is the most radio resistance this is the this is also seen in 0 to 20 years age group right so this is osteosarcoma that is why the treatment of choice here is going to be surgery if inoperable we would give chemotherapy before the surgery all right yes it is also radiation induced so we have primary osteosarcoma we have secondary secondary could be secondary to radiotherapy it could be secondary to Paget's disease and that is why it has a bimodal age distribution okay so this is about osteosarcoma going on to two other metaphyseal lesions you can see how this is also metaphyseal two other metaphyseal lesion both are both have humerus proximal humerus as a favored site so you can see how both of them are seen in young patients so typically 0 to 20 years these are two cysts of the bone when you see that it's a simple cyst no trabeculation and you see a pathological fracture with a fracture fragment which is floating this is a simple bone cyst or a unicameral bone cyst herein this sign is called as the fallen leaf sign also called as a trap door sign okay if the more favored name is the fallen leaf sign so this is an sbc the treatment is going to be just simple like its name simple curettage okay on the other hand when you see that it's again a metaphyseal tumor you can see how it's metaphyseal can you all see the epiphysis separately yeah so again a metaphyseal tumor but with a GCT like appearance with a soap bubble appearance with trabeculations what is this this is aneurysmal bone cyst all right so this is an aneurysmal bone cyst is the closest mimic of GCT a repeat question closest mimic of GCT ABC because it looks like ABC except for the fact that GCT is epiphyseal ABC is metaphyseal I hope this point is driven across okay so this is aneurysmal bone cyst if we do an MRI in both of these in fact in GCT and abc i'm gonna see these blood fluid levels blood 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 levels or blood fluid levels because of collection of blood all right so these are the two cysts which we have okay no other difference tripti that's the only difference that is going to help you distinguish the two okay going ahead into two very again close differentials so in both of these you are having a calcification or a high density mass which is based out of the soft tissue in one the density is higher in the periphery it's more loosened in the center in the other the density is higher in the center and more loosened in the periphery which is which this one here which has a shape like an o isn't it this is myositis ossificans all right the name itself is going to tell you the answer that the density is going to be higher in the periphery so this is myositis ossificans the other one is a surface osteosarcoma atypical osteosarcoma surface arising from the parosteum so this is the parosteal osteosarcoma and the clincher here is the 
cleft it is going to grow from the surface it's going to have this cleft forming here this is called as the cleft sign and also the density being most in the center so this is parostial os versus myositis ossificans myositis ossificans typically would occur in some sort of fracture most commonly they would give you history of a child who has had supracondylar humerus fracture and then there is some sort of massage and neglect which has happened that would lead to myositis ossificans okay so i hope these two differentials are clear three most important for the exams per se when you see a tumor growing outside this is an exostosis or an osteochondroma so this is not a true bone tumor remember this is considered to be a, a a defect in the bony formation so this is osteochondroma we cannot see the cartilage cap on the x-ray we can only see the bone so that is why the investigation of choices mri because it can show us the cartilage cap why do we want to see the cartilage cap we want to see the cartilage cap because it is the chondrosarcoma component which is going to result right so anytime the cartilage cap becomes more than 1.5 centimeter in thickness we want to electively remove this mass because there is suspicion of chondrosarcoma all right so 1.5 centimeter is the crucial number for osteodosteoma osteoblastoma also nidus ke liye 1.5 centimeter we used yahan pe also we are going to be using 1.5 centimeter for cap theek hai to same number will suffice for all bone tumors so remember osteo uh, chondroma has potential to become chondrosarcoma femur which a with a pathological fracture with a crooked neck deformity so this is called as shefford crook deformity and this has resulted because of a metaphyseal ground glass tumor which is fibrous dysplasia so this is fibrous dysplasia remember ground glass opacity from covid 19 this is ground glass opacity which is seen in the bone fibrous matrix ke karan we have this ground glass opacity so this is fibrous dysplasia it could be monoostotic which is one bone but more important is polyostotic fibrous dysplasia there are two syndromes from m mccune albright the buzzword is going to be precocious puberty whereas in maza broad syndrome the buzzword is going to be mixomas so yahan pe aapko history diya jayega precocious puberty ka with multifocal bones predominantly it is craniofacial bones in maza broad remember maza maza broad mixoma all right so mixoma and maza broad syndrome are the two syndromes which will result in polyostotic fibrous dysplasia yes histopathologically correct rachna we would see a chinese letter arrangement whereas do we see a chinese letter arrangement in microbiology we have seen this in mki only i think chinese letter would be seen in uh diphtheria right so uh, diphtheria arrangement also is chinese letter okay any time you see hand and multifocal bones are showing you these tumors this is n chondroma remember hand hand mein se a n a n ko banao e n it becomes n chondroma multiple n chondromas olier syndrome typically it is always oliers which results in case they tell you that there are bluish lesions there are phleboliths there are hemangiomas this is what this is mafuchi syndrome so olier syndrome mafuchi syndrome so four syndromes here for you with fibrous dysplasia and n chondroma respectively okay so very very important bone tumors are done to just for completion sake in the skull when you see something like this a very solid uh, just the same density as the bone on the ct this is an osteoma osteomas are more common on the skull and one syndrome you always want to rule out is the gardner syndrome so you want to rule out fap in these patients you want to rule out dental malformations and the rule out congenital hypertrophy of retinal pigment epithelium right all of these are changes associated with gardner syndrome you would also have fibrous tumors like desmoid tumors hai na to ye sare finding hote gardner syndrome ke osteoma fibromas dental malformation supernumerary teeth hai na 
sebaceous cyst correct so these are all gardeners on the other hand the second one based around the clivus this is an mri which is showing a very vascular clival tumor so this is the most this is clival chordoma so remember chordomas are gonna arise from notochordal remnants and the most common site is gonna be around the sacrum sacral chordomas are most common second most common site is the clivus okay so this is something that you need to know the appearance is going to be called as a soap bubble appearance and histopath question yahan pe path ka sawal zyada aata hai rather than radio or ortho question what are these cells so these cells are called as correct physaliferous cells so these are the physaliferous cells which are the hallmark of chordoma one question came in an older neat exam that what kind of radiotherapy would be best for chordoma remember it is proton beam therapy why because proton beam therapy you no know, has something called as the bragg's peak wherein they act quite deep in the body so you can see how it's based very deep and they do not have associated surrounding organ injury so that is why uh, you know these are two independent question ek question tha clival chordoma ke liye kya karenge which is proton beam another question came proton beam where do we see bragg speak bragg speak is seen in proton beam therapy all right so that is one more uh, question for you okay yes you will get pdf uh, annotated pdf all right after the class is over i shall post it on the group which group it is called neat pg with dr zainab bora it's on telegram you can just search it's a the access group all right various tests in ortho are very very important what is the first one here we are measuring the flexion whether there is deformity of flexion or not right so this is modified schober's test in uni if we bend we are going to have a 5 cm or more increase in the length but in the patients who have ankylosing spondylitis they have a fused spine so their flexion limit ho jata hai that is why this is something which is going to be positive in ankylosing spondylitis is okay very very important on the other hand again somebody is bending forwards but not with a measuring tape so jab aisa image aayega this is called as adams forward bending test adams forward bending test is to distinguish scoliosis which is postural or structural agar wo khali postural hua to jab wo bend karega it will become normal but if it is structural obviously it will not correct itself right so this is basically used in scoliosis to distinguish post structural versus structural scoliosis very nice and last one is very important something that you need to know and you can't get this question wrong this is modified allen's test yeah so this is modified allen's test which is used to test the patency of the palmar arch all right we want to see when we are doing an abg before doing an abg you want to test whether the palmar arch is patent so what do you do you press compress both radial and ulnar artery such that the palm becomes very pale uske baad ek ko chhod do and then see if it uh, regains the vascularity fir dusra ko chhod do see if it regains the vascularity so this is done before abg G to see that even if you sacrifice the radial, you do such an amazing, amazing ABG that radial artery is bent, then also the patient's hand we won't have to amputate. Okay, so that is the purpose, and that is why it is very important because you as interns are supposed to do, supposed to know ABG. है ना तो जो चीजें हमें supposed to know होना चाहिए, वो गलत नहीं करना. That will get you to lose the rank, and we are not trying to lose rank. We are trying to gain rank. Okay, three tests for. For thoracic outlet obstruction, <laughs> so we have ROS. Do you guys know ROS from friends? So the uh, no, not ROS. Remember RAW. Sorry, so <laughs> mnemonic got mixed up. RAW. All right. So RAW are the three tests which are for TOS, thoracic outlet obstruction. So in some way it is ROS. <laughs> so remember R A W. So uh, the three tests for thoracic outlet uh, syndrome are one is gonna be the RUS. test yeah this is the roos test the second one is the adson test and w is the right test all right so r a w roos adson and roos adson and right so roost is also called as 
ईस्ट एलिवेटेड आर्म स्ट्रेस टेस्ट तो उसमें आर्म को एलिवेट करके फॉर फाइव मिनट्स वी आस्क द पेशेंट टू डू दिस यू एंड आई माई वुड बी एबल टू डू इट और राइट सो दिस इज अ चैलेंज फॉर यू गाइज फॉर द नेक्स्ट फाइव मिनट्स एट इन योर हाउसेज कीप डूइंग द रूज टेस्ट टू सी दैट यू डोंट हैव थोड़ा सिक आउटलेट ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन और राइट सो दिस इज वॉट वी आर डूइंग हियर नॉर्मल पीपल विल बी एबल टू डू इट हियर इन एट सन्स वी आर जस्ट बेसिकली चेकिंग फॉर द रेडियल पल्सेशन इफ इट गेट्स लॉस्ट एंड इन राइट ऑल्सो वी आर एलिवेटिंग एन अगेन checking for the radial pulsation so just got to recognize ab kya hon uh, the points you need to know about thoracic outlet what is the most common cause of thoracic outlet obstruction it is cervical rib all right so an accessory rib from c spine cervical rib then what is the most common obstruction is it nerve artery or vein it is nerve followed by vein followed by artery the nerve to be obstructed here is c8 and t1 nerve roots for vein subclavian vein for artery subclavian artery theek hai to ye bas itne yaad kar lo iske alawa kuch bhi aaya to that is your fourth option right to teen yaad kar lo bahut hai right you cannot do all the tests in the world so that is how you just do what you can and then you do be smart and see ki agar kuch naya hi aa gaya to that is the fourth option that you mark okay so that is rules action and right ye kya ho raha hai here we are doing a straight leg raise test all right so if you have disc prolapse all right if you have disc prolapse and you have compression of a nerve root you would see that somewhere around 60 to 75 degree you start to have uh, paresthesias again something for you to do while you listen to the class you can do the straight leg raise test so your parents will also be very happy that hamare bacche physically act bhi ho rahe padhai karte karte straight leg raise test 60 to 75 degrees if you have paresthesia that's a sign that there is disc prolapse investigation of choice is going to be mri all right i'm going to show you an mri of disc prolapse yeah this is also called not as lazanier test but as lazegs test right lazegs test is the other name of this okay what are you doing here what are you doing in this this is called as the obers test any time you see somebody is as a tilted and then some flexion is going on we are seeing the integrity of ilio tibial band right so this is ilio tibial band this is the obers test okay theek hai what do you have here what do we have here yeah everybody is now hungry after lasagna all of our exercise 2 minute exercise going to waste ये क्या हो रहा है दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एनी टाइम यू हियर द वर्ड थॉमस जस्ट अज्यूम दैट ये एग्जाम में आएगा थॉमस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर एग्जाम एंड थॉमस इज फॉर टीबी थॉमस पर्सन ओनली वर्क ऑन टीबी इन इज लाइफ ऑल राइट सो वी हैव थॉमस टेस्ट वी हैव थॉमस प्लेट बोथ रिलेटेड टू ट्यूबरक्यूलॉसिस ओके सो इन अ नॉर्मल पर्सन व्हेन यू डू दिस फ्लेक्शन हियर हिप फ्लेक्शन नो प्रॉब्लम बट दिस पर्सन हैज अ फ्लेक्शन डिफॉर्मिटी बिकॉज ऑफ इलियो सोआस कॉन्ट्रैक्चर एंड दैट इज व्हाई ही हैज टू डू एन कंपेंसेटरी फ्लेक्शन ऑफ द अदर साइड ऑल राइट सो दिस इज टू लुक फॉर इलियो सोआस फ्लेक्शन कॉन्ट्रैक्चर और लाइट सो इलियोसोआस में कॉन्ट्रैक्चर आ जाएगा तो फ्लेक्शन ऑफ द हिप विल नॉट बी देयर ओके सो दिस इज थॉमस टेस्ट वेरी क्विकली नी लिगामेंट टेस्ट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वॉट आर यू सींग हियर वी आर पुलिंग द टिबिया इंटीरियरली विच इज द लिगामेंट विच प्रिवेंट्स इंटीरियर टिबियल ट्रांसलेशन इट इज ए सी एल सो ए सी एल का इंटेग्रिटी टेस्ट कर रहे हैं टू टेस्ट वी हैव एंटीरियर ड्रॉर एंड लैच मैन एंटीरियर ड्रॉर इज एट नाइनटी डिग्री फ्लेक्शन सो दिस इज नॉट नाइनटी डिग्री दिस समवेर अराउंड ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी डिग्री सो दिस इज द लैच मैन टेस्ट ऑल राइट सो दिस इज लैच मैन टेस्ट फॉर इंटेग्रिटी ऑफ ए सी एल डन एट थर्टी डिग्री एंटीरियर ड्रॉर में भी नाइनटी डिग्री फ्लेक्स करके आगे खींचेंगे दैट इज ऑल्सो ए सी एल दैट इज ऑल्सो द टेस्ट फॉर ए सी एल on the other hand three tests for menisci when you see for menisci we always have to test rotational integrity right so here we have flexed and then we are rotating the knee so what is this test this is the mec mares test on the other hand any time you see somebody is prone and then you are doing stuff you are basically uh, uh, doing rotational stability this is called as apley's grinding test all right so apley's grinding test here again you have to do some imagination that you are lying prone on your bed and you are eating an apple uh, theek hai so that is apley's grinding 
test and then finally when you are dancing when it looks like the person is dancing first we are doing rotational activity on both the sides to apne ko yaad rakhna hai thalaiva from dance we remember thalaiva and from thalaiva we will remember and we'll see the option thesali test all right so these are three tests for मेनिस्काइट ओके तो ये हो गई मेनिस्काइ टेस्ट इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ चॉइस फॉर नी लिगमेंट्स इज एम आर आई बट वेन आस्ट वॉट इज द गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड इज ऑलवेज समथिंग डायग्नोस्टिक प्लस थेरापूटिक विच इज आर्थ्रोस्कोपी इन दिस केस टू लिगमेंट्स फॉर यू टू आइडेंटिफाई वॉट इज दिस लिगामेंट गोइंग फ्रॉम पोस्टीरियर फीमर टू एंटीरियर टिबिया सो रिमेंबर नेमिंग इज ऑलवेज ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ टिबिया ठीक है तो ये हो जाता है एंटीरियर क्रूशियट लिगामेंट क्रूशियट मतलब इट क्रॉसेस सो दिस इज ए सी एल एंटीरियर क्रूशियट लिगामेंट ऑन दी अदर हैंड पोस्टीरियर क्रूशियट लिगामेंट फ्रॉम एंटीरियर फीमर टू पोस्टीरियर टिबिया सो दिस इज पोस्टीरियर क्रूशियट लिगामेंट प्रिवेंट्स पोस्टीरियर टिबियल ट्रांसलेशन ओके ए सी एल इंजरी इज फार मोर कॉमन देन पी सी एल तो यही एग्जाम में पूछा जाएगा वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ओके ऑल राइट नेक्स्ट what do you see here whenever you see aisa down right thumbs up is this but when thumbs up ka can is empty we do this right thumbs down <laughs> so this is empty can test all right so this is empty can test which is a test for supra spinatus the most important tendon of most important tendon of the rotator cuff right most commonly injured also so this supraspinatus on the other hand this guy is trying to lift off his arm so this is called as gerber's lift off test ger ber hai na gerber's lift off test this is for the forgotten tendon of rotator cuff kon hai wo forgotten tendon it is sub it is sub scapularis all right so it is sub scapularis which is the forgotten tendon of the rotator cuff theek hai to ye ho gaya hamara muscles two tests for which we will remember that the mnemonic is bad all right so what is bad bad means barlo mein adduction and it's bad means what that there is going to be dislocation of the hip so this is how you remember do not remember bahar lo remember bar lo mein hum kya karenge we will do adduction and because it is bad there is going to be dislocation theek hai kyunki agar bahar lo yaad rakhoge to you will think that this basically is abduction all right been there done that so remember bad bar lo is adduction adduction is dislocation ortolani on the other hand is where you do abduction and that is going to relocate all right it is going to relocate the things all right uh, the hips very very important one of you asked where is double pcl sign seen good question double pcl sign is seen in bucket handle meniscal tear all right so whenever you have a bucket handle tear like a bucket handle you know menisci flips anteriorly one part of the torn menisci flips anteriorly and it lies like this so that looks like a double pcl so it is seen in a bucket handle meniscal tear theek hai to ye bhi ho gaya आगे जाते हुए ओके सो बैड बार लो एंड ऑटो रानी थैंक यू साजल गोइंग ऑन टू वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सॉफ्ट टिश्यू टेस्ट सो व्हाट डू वी हैव हियर टू टेस्ट फॉर कार्पल टनल सिंड्रोम All right. Now, don't ask me all sorts of doubts about anything because we won't be able to complete. We are on fifteen out of forty-nine, and we've only fifteen twenty more minutes. What do we have here? This is phalanx or tinnel or but dorcans this is fallen hai na reverse namaste this is fallen and where you directly tap on the nerve tap tap on the nerve turn no tap on the nerve this is tinnel uh, sign all right so this is tinnel sign one question was asked previously what is the most specific sign that is dorcans test all right uska photo usually you don't get it's a mixture of both it's a directly provocative test so these are all tests for carpal tunnel syndrome which is median nerve compression right what do we have here this is very very important this is the finkelstein's test all right this question always comes do not get this wrong finkelstein test mein hum first extensor compartment ko stress kar rahe hain it is involved in d quervian stenosynovitis who will tell me the two tendons who remembers the mnemonic the very 
नॉट वेरी ग्रेट न्यूमोनिक विच आई हैव मेड फॉर यू गाइज सो हियर यू वॉन्ट टू रिमेंबर द टू टेंडन्स विच आर अफेक्टेड वुड बी ए बी पी एल एंड एक्स पी B. All right. So these are the two tendons which are remember for this. Uh, there is a Hindi mnemonic that whenever you uh, have a breakup, all right. Whenever you have a breakup, then your friends are gonna be like, now you should drink. Ab pile, and then you would be like, your ex is also drinking. X P B. All right. So this is a very stupid mnemonic from a very stupid mind, which is me. So this is ab pile X P B. All right. That is what you are gonna now say. Okay. So this is a uh, deep variance to nosotomitis and. this is fankelstein's uh, test okay all right <laughs> next what we have is this so what is this this is cousin's test this is cousin's test which is seen in tennis elbow hai na to tennis elbow mein hum ye cousin's test karte hain again a direct provocation test uh, and that is what this is okay all right lateral epicondylitis yeah on the other hand golfer's elbow is your medial epicondylitis okay next all the nerve injury tests again one question from this always comes so all four of these are tests for which um, nerve all of these are tests for the ulnar nerve so remember ulnar nerve just remember the muscles and this becomes very conceptual do not create mnemonics just remember the concept so ulnar nerve is going to supply both of the interosseae right so we have the palmar interosseae and dorsal so we have pad and dab i'm sure you guys know it palmar is adduction and dorsal is abduction apart from that it supplies all of the digiti minimi muscles hypothenar muscles and very important the only thenar thumb muscle it's going to supply is the adduct Ter policies, right? So if you remember this, then you are sorted as far as nerve injuries are concerned. So what am I testing here? Card test. We have kept a card here, and we are asking that you have to keep it and hold it. So we are testing the muscle. Which muscle? We are testing the function of the palmar interosseae, right? Palmar interosseae. Pad. 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 Pad.
eight. All P's means median. So in case you forget in the exam, remember all P's go together with median nerve. Finally, this is the OK sign or the kilonavin sign for OK. For us to make an OK, we need the flexion. We need FDP working, right? We need FDP working. So this will not be seen if FDP is not working. And there's a sign of AIN, anterior interosseous nerve, which is again a branch of median nerve. Remember, PIN is a branch of radial nerve. AIN is a branch of median nerve. Nerve. okay so this is done going ahead into the fractures and dislocations very very quickly so what do we have here in the first one first of all what is the structure marked here this is the coracoid process we can see how the shoulder has dislocated and this has come in below the coracoid so this is sub coracoid this is sub coracoid ulnar paradox is basically the fact that if you have ulnar injury at the elbow as compared to ulnar injury of the wrist the claw hand of the elbow injury is going to be more severe than the claw hand of the ulnar injury of the wrist. Why that is? Is because of the flexor carpi ulnaris. Flexor carpi ulnaris pero jayega. There will be further flexion here. All right. That is why. That is ulnar paradox. Okay. Yeah, yeah. These are different. This is not claw hand. This is, see, claw hand will happen at rest. They will have flexion. This is when I am trying to ask them to do flexion. Yeah, flexion nahi ho pa ra do digits ka. All right. So, they are two different things. Okay. All right. Going again to subcoracoid dislocation. So, this is subcoracoid anterior dislocation of the shoulder. This is the most common type of anterior dislocation. All right. This is the most common type of anterior dislocation. All right. You should not feel boredom <laughs> because it is your exam. Huh? I, I do not feel boredom in teaching because I take it as if it is my exam and I, I teach in that spirit. So, hopefully you take it in that spirit that it is our exam. We better study and not get bored. All right. So, so there is a lot at stake. I mean, I think getting bored is the last feeling that you should be dealing with. A lot of people are getting very stressed out. So, don't take stress. But getting bored is like the whole different spectrum. Hai na? So, Right? Subcaracoid sub anterior dislocation is the most common type. After that, what do you have? Whenever you have recurrent anterior dislocation, recurrent anterior dislocation, you can see something like this, which is the Bankart lesion. Bankart lesion is the inferior labral fracture. All right. So remember, this is called as bony Bankart. We'll chat guys. Now will be 7 o'clock class. Day. It's all about this only. Whatever are the feelings that you want to share. No, we'll do it. But right now let's uh, focus on this. Otherwise, ortho hamara bilkul hi nahi paega. Okay. So what we are having here is bony bank card. So this is bony bank card. On the other hand, a true bank card lesion is a labral injury. So what is the labral injury? It is antero inferior or infero anterior glenoid labral tear labrum ka tear ho raha hai on the other hand what is hill sacs hill sacs is when you have posterolateral humeral fracture impaction fracture so remember these these are two very very important points bank art and hill sacs and finally when you see that the humeral end phase uh, you know you are seeing the humerus end phase this is called as a light bulb sign light bulb sign is seen in posterior dislocation of the shoulder all right so posterior dislocation of shoulder light bulb sign light bulb sign also seen in pheochromocytoma on mri because of the high t2 hyper intensity Remember anterior dislocation overall most common you would have the arm in the abduction external rotation position. History diya hoga game khelte khelte boundary se ball fekte fekte the patient will come with the arm attitude like this. On the other hand adduction internal rotation adir. Uh, history of epilepsy, he, history of seizure would be given to you and adduction internal rotation would be given. Yeah, hemangium also ania does have T2 hyper intensity will also show you light bulb sign, correct. Okay, then what do you have here? You have a proximal humeral fracture. So here what they ask you is what is the classification used for this? It is the near classification, near classification for proximal humerus. On the other hand, this fracture is called as 
what is the name of this fracture wherein it goes along the spiral groove associated with radial nerve injury this is called as holstein lewis fracture holstein lewis fracture radial nerve injury for humeral fracture we have this cast that we use this is the hanging cast or the u slab which we use for humerus so remember h u for humeral fractures okay two very very important pediatric fractures both are included under the salter harris classification because the growth plate is injured ye kya hai sabse pehle what are you seeing this is above the condyle so this is supra condylar humerus fracture supra condylar humerus fracture we have the gartland classification jisme most common is the extension type the deviation the displacement which is more common is dorsal remember kabhi bhi डिस्प्लेसमेंट बोलते हैं डिस्टल फ्रेगमेंट का देखना है ना देखोगे तो ये तो आगे जा रहा है सो वी डिफाइन इट एज द डिस्प्लेसमेंट ऑफ द डोर्सल फ्रेगमेंट डिस्टल फ्रेगमेंट विच इज डोर्सल इन दिस केस सो दिस इज डोर्सल डिस्प्लेसमेंट विच इज मोस्ट कॉमन इन सुपरा कॉन्डाइलर यूमरस द कॉम्प्लिकेशन विथ सुपरा कॉन्डाइलर यूमरस इज माल यूनियन और नॉन यूनियन कल ही डिस्कस करा बहुत बार इट इज मैल यूनियन एंड द डिफॉर्मिटी विच हैपन्स वेरी फ्रीक्वेंटली आस्ट इज द गन स्टॉप डिफॉर्मिटी राइट वट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन नर्व टू बी इंजर्ड इन सुपरा कॉन्डाइलर द ऑर्डर इज एमरू ए आई एन फॉलोड बाई मीडियन फॉलोड बाई रेडियल फॉलोड बाई अलनार एंड अनदर कॉम्प्लिकेशन वन वी डिस्कस माओसाइटस ऑसिफिकन्स अनदर कॉम्प्लिकेशन इज दिस वॉल्कमैन स्कीमिक कॉन्ट्रैक्चर जिसके लिए वी कैन यूज अ वॉल्कमैन स्कीमिक कॉन्ट्रैक्चर Splint also called as a turn buckle splint. All right. If it fails, we can do a surgery, which is a tendon surgery, which is called as Max Page surgery. Okay. So this is Volkman's ischemic contracture. Apart from that, you can also have compartment syndrome, which can result. All right. Wherein you know the various P's. The treatment is going to be fasciotomy immediately. what you see here is a lateral condylar fracture lateral condylar humerus fracture what is the most common complication idhar agar mal union hai yahan pe remember non union i have given you a mnemonic for remembering all mal union mal union non union remember that it is miscellaneous for mal union so what all fractures undergo mal union intertrochanteric femur fracture SCH supracondylar and C for coles and clavicle. All right, so एक याद रख लो बचा हुआ non union we have flutes. What are all the fractures which undergo non union? Femur neck fracture, L for lateral condylar, ulna and tibial inferior third. T for talus and S for scaphoid fracture. All right, so these are all the fractures which undergo non-union. Okay, very very important. If you remember this, half of your orthopedics anyway is sorted. Non-union hoega. What is the deformity which will happen? There is going to be cubitus valgus deformity, and that would result in a tardy ulnar nerve palsy. Tardy ulnar nerve palsy happens here. Tardy means delayed hoega. Okay. Going ahead into two fracture dislocation complexes. Remember Grimus. ठीक है. अगर inferior radius का fracture है, like in this case, distal radius, inferior radius. This is Galazzi's fracture. Galazzi fracture is inferior radius with radio ulnar joint dislocation. On the other hand, proximal या फिर superior ulna, ulna superior का fracture है. This is Montegia. This is how you uh, diagnose it. Galazzi Azi and Montegia. So this is Montegia superior ulna fracture with radial head dislocation. Most common nerve to be injured, P I N, posterior interosseous nerve. So I hope Galazi and Montegia is clear. Three named fractures again. When you see unicortical, one one cortex is involved. This is a pediatric fracture, green stick fracture. When you see only the ulna ka complete fracture, this is night stick fracture, है ना? So night stick fracture लाठी से जो होएगा defence में, so this is night stick fracture. And when you do not have cortical irregularity, you just have a buckling. This is called as torus fracture or a buckle fracture. Only buckling is there, no discontinuity of the uh, cortex. Very very important. आगे बढ़ते हुए वेन एवर यू हैव एक्स्ट्रा आर्टिकुलर रेडियल फ्रैक्चर रेडियस का इंजरी है एक्स्ट्रा आर्टिकुलर नॉट इंट्रा आर्टिकुलर 
this you have to see the displacement when the displacement of distal fragment again is dorsal remember thumb aage hai this is dorsal displacement remember c d coles mein hota hai dorsal displacement so extra articular fractures dorsal displacement coles agar volar displacement hai smith or reverse coles c d se ek aur fayda ho jayega what is the deformity which happens here we have the dinner fork deformity in smith what do we have so say he we remember garden spade and a spade deformity is what is going to happen here finally what is the cast that we use for a coles fracture so the mnemonic here remember sharuk khan what does sharuk khan say hi rahul naam to sunna hi hoga that is what sharuk says naam to sunna hoga like that we go naam to sunna hoga and you shake your hand right just like that coles bhi naam to sunna hi hoga so this is your hand shaking cast now why so much pain to remember hand shaking cast hame to waise hi yaad tha here sharuk khan will further help you how sharuk khan will further help you sharuk khan will further help you because sharuk khan is from up so we remember up the position in which this cast is taken is ulnar deviation you have pronation and you have palmar flexion right so this is the position of the cast which will also tell you from up also remember kisi se hath milane ke liye thumb is very important right thumb position very crucial so thumb free hona chahiye to for hand shaking okay so this is that apart from that what is this fracture very frequently missed if you take just an ap view of the wrist this is a scaphoid fracture so a lot of times we need to take a oblique view for us to diagnose scaphoid fractures better but still you can miss it and it would undergo non union like we saw this could undergo avascular necrosis because it has a retrograde supply and the waist is the most common part to be fractured so remember avn why because waist se retrograde supply aata hai okay now skip point you miss the fracture now you miss the fracture you are again very sad so what do you do to forget your gum and your pain you hold a glass right so glass holding cast glass holding cast and who has missed this fracture it's a doctor which has missed the fracture so glass holding cast for scaphoid fracture because you missed it and the position is dr what is dr dorsiflexion and radial deviation ठीक है तो ऐसे करके हमें ये भी याद हो जाएगा ओके थ्री फाइनल थिंग्स बिफोर वी वाइंड अप आई गेस ओके नो वी हैव फ्यू मोर थिंग्स बिफोर वी वाइंड अप बेस ऑफ थम फ्रैक्चर दो बेस ऑफ थम फ्रैक्चर है विच आर एक्चुअली फ्रैक्चर डिस्लोकेशन वेन यू सी इट्स अ टू पार्ट फ्रैक्चर एक एंड दो बे गुजराती में बे को ना बेनेट I mean, B means do. So when you have a two-part fracture, this is Bennett's fracture dislocation. Because in Gujarati, B means two, two-part fracture. When it's a three-part fracture, it is Rolando fracture. All right. So Rolando and Bennett. Remember, Bennett is two-part. Rolando is three-part base of thumb. And finally, what do you see here? Look at the fifth metacarpal ka neck ka fracture is seen in boxers. So this is boxers fracture, fifth metacarpal neck fracture. Okay. Finally, going on to a few more questions from this one slide. What is this? This is patella fracture. Patella fracture in which view am I showing you? This is the skyline view. And what is the management? This is the cylindrical cast for patella fracture. Now, before we put in the cast, we have to do the fixation. The fixation is using tension band wiring. So, two locations where we do tension band wiring. One you can see here. It is the olecranon fracture. and the another one is patella all right so lots of questions at least three questions here skyline view so say cylindrical and we do tension band wiring here which is also useful for olecranon fracture last not last <laughs> let's see how much longer we can go on so three more fractures which we have here whenever you see lateral condylar fracture you know this is fibula so this is lateral condylar this is bumper fracture ab chal rahe the and then कार ने आके बंप कर दिया द बंपर हिट यू मोस्ट लाइकली यू वुड बी स्टैंडिंग सो इट हिट योर लेटरल टिबिया दैट्स व्हाई दिस इज बंपर फ्रैक्चर लेटरल टिबियल कॉन्डाइलर फ्रैक्चर रिमेंबर फॉर टिबियल फ्रैक्चर वी यूज द शैट्सगर क्लासिफिकेशन शैट्सगर क्लासिफिकेशन नॉट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर एफएमजी बट यू कैन जस्ट हैव दिस इन माइंड ठीक है शैट्सगर क्लासिफिकेशन 
calcification. Then what is this? The second one. Second one is where you have talus ka fracture. Dekh rho, talus ke neck pe fracture ho gaya. This is aviator fracture. All right. And aviator fracture also remember A, V, A, V, N. Again, neck of talus will undergo non-union. It will also undergo A, V, N. To bilkul scaphoid ka bhai hai. Dono hi complications yaha pe bhi common hai. Okay. All right. So, that is what we want to remember and finally when you see a trimalleolar fracture trimalleolar mane cotton bada naam bimalleolar mane chota naam do malleoli chote malleoli do chota naam pot fracture all right so we have pot and we have cotton fracture lover's fracture is calcaneum fracture when you jump like a lover it is calcaneal fracture along with a burst fracture of the spine. Hai na? To un dono ko lover's fracture bolte hai. Lastly, very important, Jones and pseudo Jones. What is this, guys? If I ask you what is this, fifth metatarsal major fracture, is this Jones or pseudo Jones? Woh ho important. When you see it's horizontal, when it is extra articular, just like Coley's Jones B, extra articular rahega. So, this is Jones. But when you see that it is articular, aise khali avulsion ho raha hai, that is pseudo Jones. All right. So, pseudo Jones is an avulsion fracture of the peroneus tendon. On the other hand, Jones is the... Uh, extra articular fracture same metatarsal mein agar diaphyseal fracture hai, that is going to be your march fracture or your stress fracture so teen fractures bahut important shaft mein se stress fracture march fracture jayega bahar se jones jayega aur avulsion is going to be pseudo jones theek hai last just ending with uh, the spine fracture so what is this this is the jefferson's fracture one of you was talking about it this is also a burst fracture but this is when you dive hai na? dive karte head ka agar trauma impact hua. so this is gonna be jefferson's fracture which is a burst fracture which is a four part ring fracture of the atlas is it a stable or an unstable fracture surprisingly it is a stable fracture hai na? four part hai jab dunya mein ek dam hi dehshat ho jaye na jab life puri barbad ho jaye remember it has a good prognosis hai na to thoda thoda fracture will have unstable but when everything is destroyed around you to cord is like ki kya hi heal payega sab kuch hi toot gaya all right so that is why here there is no neurological impact as such so this is actually neurologically stable so this is jefferson's fracture this is a burst fracture of the ring of atlas on the the other hand what do we have here here you are having the c2 c3 spondylolisthesis so this is listhesis and what is this this is hangman's fracture all right so c2 c3 extension and axial loading is the mechanism this is hangman's fracture and finally very baby fracture that you just have to diagnose what do we have here this is spinous process c7 spinous process fracture is clay shoveler's fracture all right clay shoveler's fracture c7 spinous process okay i think we have to stop here because i have a class at seven o'clock i will take one more part of orthopedics uh, in one or two days very soon tomorrow or day after only i'll take so that orthopedics gets a closure okay so kal try karungi otherwise day after tomorrow for sure all right so i hope this was useful yeah we are almost studying entire orthopedics practically okay all right so thank you so much and i'll see you all uh, very soon abhi agar koi doubt puchna chahte ho gappe marna chahte ho you can come on the app i'll share the link in a bit okay thank you so much